Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a project to share with you today. We are working on a set of peg dolls for our nature table, which is fall themed. So I'm going to have two, actually more, uh, peg dolls that are uh, kind of like in the fall colors. Today I'm showing you two of them and these are the large size peg dolls and all of the materials that I'm using today are from a childsdream.com. You can find links to these products in the description box below. So I'm going to try a two-toned kind of an ombre effect here. Now I saw an, another crafter do this online. I'm going to share her uh, her video because I really, really love the way she got the two different colors to kind of work on one peg doll. And I'm having kind of a tough time here. It's just not kind of turning out the way I expected. It's okay. It's just not what I expected. It looks really beautiful nonetheless. Now on top of the paint, I am going to add this shimmery gold liquid. Uh, it comes as a powder and it's called Perfect Pearls and I mixed it with a little bit of water and I am just kind of putting it on top, kind of, I'm, I'm being a little heavy handed here and I'm going to wash some of it off because it ends up kind of clumping at the top. But I thought that some of the water would then help kind of move the rest of the paint down and kind of give it more of like a blended look but it didn't actually turn out quite the way I wanted the the colors didn't quite blend the way I expected but I'm going to put that aside while it dries and work on the hair I am using some bulky weight lamb's pride wool yarn and I really like working with this kind of weight for the hair because you don't have to use as many strands and it covers the head really well. Now since I'm not going to put a hat or a scarf or a cap on this peg doll, I want to make sure that there are no glue spots showing when I'm done gluing the hair in place. So I'm being a little bit more careful and trying to position everything so that it's going to look like a nice head of hair and there isn't going to be any glue showing because when you put a hat on it you can get just a little bit messy and it doesn't really matter so much because it's going to get covered anyway. The other thing that makes this yarn preferable to use or over the worsted weight or any other thinner uh, yarn, even if it's plied, when it's thinner you just tend to have to use more and it sometimes can make the head just look a little bit too poofy with hair. It's still going to look poofy with this hair but not um, as, as you're just not going to use as many strands of yarn. I gave her a little trim and I'm just going to do one more trim here just to make sure it's all the same uh, length and for this peg doll I'm not going to add any wool to the peg doll itself. I'm going to just leave the painted base as the uh, decoration for this peg doll but I am going to use those little clippings to give her a couple of bangs and I just kind of ruffle them up with my hand a little bit just to make them look a little bit fuller. So this is my scrap box of felt pieces and I'm just going through it just trying to see if there's anything that I can use for this for decorations for this doll. And I decided to use all these tiny little scraps in these fall colors to cut up these little leaves. And I got this idea from a previous peg doll that I made recently when we made the four seasons, we made a peg doll for each season, and for the fall season, we made a little gnome hat that was decorated with all of these little leaves, and I liked the look so much, I thought that we could do something similar for this one. Now, I have to admit that she is not my favorite peg doll in the end. I Just something about it just didn't come together the way I expected, but that's okay. Uh, you know, this is an art form, and people are going to respond differently to it, and it turns out that my kids really love her, and my six-year-old daughter and my 11-year-old son are fighting over her, as a matter of fact, so I might need to make two, actually. So I just found a, a strip of wool that I trimmed down enough to make kind of like a bandana. I'm going to glue all of these little leaves onto the bandana and I'm using hot glue for this project and I tend to use hot glue for all of our peg dolls and our finger puppets because it is really easy and it's very durable and it's super fast. But if you are not fast enough, your glue will cool before you get everything adhered. So if that is something that you foresee as a problem, you can always use some tacky glue. It will take longer to dry and you will have to hold it in place, but at least you will have a longer work time. 
So I went ahead and put a little bit of glue on the front part of her hair and then a little, a little bit of glue on the back and uh, that held in place really well. So here I am adding some more glitter. <laughs> Actually it's like an iridescent powder, it's not really glitter. Uh, and then I added water to kind of tone it down a little bit and this is what she looks like when she's all finished and all dry. And I don't add any varnish or any sealant to this. I just leave it the way it is. Okay, so I am going to work on another peg doll. And I did the same technique. So I didn't show you the whole process again there. I just showed you the peg doll. So she looks very similar to the last one. But this one's going to look different. I actually really like the way that she turns out. I am using one of my favorite colors for hair. It is this gorgeous flaming red-orange color. I absolutely love it. What I don't love, and I'm thinking that I accidentally bought the wrong weight, is that this is worsted weight versus bulky weight for the yarn. And you just kind of need more pieces in order to cover the whole head and, and just kind of make it look like a full head of hair. And I, I don't like the way it looks as much as the way the bulky yarn looks but again I think this is a matter of preference. I'm also going to give her bangs as well and I usually just use the trimmings from when I trim the hair in order to give her the bangs and then uh, just kind of ruffle it up a little bit after I trim it down. Now one thing that is nice about using the worsted weight for the hair is that over time it's going to get full naturally and so whereas the bulky weight of yarn ends up getting a little bit too full and a little bit too ratty looking, the worsted weight ends up looking just right over time. Now I've been making these peg dolls and finger puppets for about 10 years now and I have to say that the all the all the ones that I made with the wool yarn and the wool felt have held up extremely well over the years and my very very first finger puppet I made with acrylic felt and it looks really ratty it actually started to look ratty within a couple of years but right now it just looks really ratty and it's just not very nice and in another video I'm going to show you the differences between the felt and how they age so if you're going to go through all the trouble to do a finger puppet like this, I highly recommend that you use felt with a high wool content. This happens to be 100% wool felt and it ages really beautifully. Okay, so she's just about done, but the one thing I added off camera was this little trim to her scarf. It's just a little bit of wool top, merino wool top, so it's very soft and very nice. I just added a tiny bit of glue to the peg doll in order to adhere that on. You don't need a whole lot. And here they both are together. And this is what it looks like on our nature table. You can see to the right, the one with the gnome hat, that is our seasonal peg doll, the one that's more simply designed. And in the front, we have our little tree babies. <laughs> with, that's what I'm calling them. Uh, and they just decorate our nature table. All right, so if you'd like to see some of our other peg doll tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. And if you'd like to keep up with what we're doing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.